30. Oh, just a motion on the Can we have a motion to accept the slate and elect the officers? Move we'll back to the board car, second by Mr. Rudnick. Any comments or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Nice aye. aye. We now come to the policy committee for an update, and I would call on the chairman of the policy committee, Mr. Rudd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the policy committee met last week uh, for about an hour and a half. Uh, we discussed one agenda item, which is, I think, actually the next item on the CIDA board agenda, the Greystone Hotel Project. And the committee uh, is unanimously recommending that the, that the IDA board approve this policy, uh, this project. Uh, that's primarily because it, it meets such a clear community need here. Uh, the building itself is in serious uh, disrepair, having been vacant for 20 years. It is a target area for redevelopment uh, by the city. And as noted by the Buffalo Building Reuse Project, Mayor Brown has a letter in the packet strongly endorsing this project on page 23 in the project. Um, and we believe the condition of this building and its ultimate use, residential uh, info, um, make it absolutely appropriate for uh, CIAs. Uh, does any member of the board have any questions of Mr. Rodney for comments? Let me ask a question or two, Mr. Rodney. Could you explain what the concept of adaptive reuse is all about? Well, I think it is actually in those two words. Uh, it is taking a building which had its initial purpose to be X, uh, and given its condition and its location and community planning uh, targeting, <coughs> it is uh, being reused for a different purpose. Uh, and that purpose essentially increases its value, its tax paying <coughs> benefits, uh, and meets a whole host of uh, community criteria. I see. Um, well, I'll ask some more questions during the presentation that's given after the staff presentation is guarding Greystone in particular because I do know that there are a number of questions that were raised at the public hearing, a transcript of which was provided to all the members of the board in which I read, I think the other board members, based on my consultations with them, I've read carefully too. And so we'll ask questions at that time. Okay. Uh, fine, that's fine. Thanks for the report. I ask uh, that the report be received and filed. Uh, we have some inducement resolutions, and the first one deals with the Greystone. And uh, I would ask Mr. Capolino, uh, the Chief Business Development Officer of the ECIDA, to give a presentation on that. Uh, good morning. Um, please refer to your packages uh, starting on page 18 for the information on the uh, Greystone project. Uh, before you for your consideration this morning is an inducement resolution for sales tax and order reporting benefits. The agency will be relying So we're talking about sales tax and order tax. We are not, insofar as the ECIDA, talking about real estate tax. Is that yeah. correct? That is correct. Uh, the agency will be relying on a secret negative declaration made by the City of Buffalo Planning Board for the 5182 Group LLC project. That determination is found on page 26 of your packages. Uh, more commonly known as the Greystone Hotel, the inducement resolution we are requesting this morning is in the total project amount of $5,290,000. It's important to note this is the overall budget for the project, not the uh, amount of incentives or financing that the agency would be providing. The developer, Elegant Development, is applying for incentives under the agency's attributes policy. 
report of the findings under the policy can be found on pages 21 and 22. We have received a strong letter of support for the project from the mayor. Uh, that can also be found uh, on page 23 of your package. Uh, was not sure about the uh, presentation screen, so I did include on the pages with the board members copies of the presentation. If you have one, you can look there, or you can uh, look at the screen. Uh, make sure I coordinate here with the slides. But, uh, the first first one we have is generally talks about the project. This is 5182. It's a 5.2 million dollar project. Uh, Elegant Development is a real estate development company that has property management experience over 30 years. They have a diverse portfolio of both commercial and residential uh, projects. Uh, as you can see from the photo, uh, the building uh, is still over 100 years old. It looks like the Italian Renaissance to me. <laughs> well, you would know. This is Italian Renaissance. Um, and it's a, uh, uh, an early example. Turning to the next slide, uh, just to go through some things. The proposed project uh, is projected to create 42 market rate apartments and 1,000 feet of commercial space. When you say market rate, what are you referring to? Luxury. Generally, when we talk about market rates, there is no public subsidy for the rental of housing rates. Such as a segregated option. Right. Some housing has an income requirement for those who uh, reside there. They would get additional income subsidy benefits to cover their rentals or reduce rents. Uh, the project would include one and two bedroom units. The one bedroom units range from approximately $750 a month to proposed rental to $1,300. The two bedroom units from about $1,100 to $1,500 a month. Uh, the developer is gearing these towards kind of middle income singles and couples, uh, potentially for those who would be uh, occupied working in the downtown uh, type of area. Well, what percentage of the people would we expect to be coming from outside of the area of Niagara County? The, there was a recent study. Um, a little bit about it from uh, Zimmerman, who was a national hired by the public sector partnership as part of the Buffalo Building Use Program that identified about 25% of the demand for new residential units in the downtown urban area, the study area, would be coming, uh, about 25% would be coming from outside of both Erie and Niagara counties. And about what percentage do we expect would be younger uh, singles or married couples? to uh, elderly. Yeah, I think um, what they talked about was probably 75% of those units typically would be looked at for either singles or empty nesters that would be looking to uh, locate in the area, particularly with uh, some of the current trends about creating walkable communities, urban living centers that really are attractive to those type of, uh, of tenants. Uh, on page two also, uh, just as we might indicate, if the project does go forward, um, in the tax status of what the building is paying today, uh, through the abatement period and the building coming out of the tax rolls, it will generate around $280,000 uh, in new tax revenue for both the county and the city, uh, which represents about a 580% increase in the project for that to be developed and we'll be saved in this today. So if the project is not developed, we um, make X dollar amounts of tax. If the project is developed, we make approximately 582% more than we otherwise would. That, that is correct. I think somebody owns. Uh, continuing to the next slide, uh, slide number three. I um, did want to talk briefly about just the, the map on this. So it does show both the project area that the BBRP looked at and the Queen City Hub investment area. This project is located within one of these strategic investment areas. Uh, it's also consistent with the overall framework for regional growth. It talks about the benefits of reinvesting into our existing infrastructure uh, areas. As you can see from the map, uh, it's a significant portion of the downtown or poor area and a section over in the market district. Uh, one of the things about the project is it promotes info redevelopment. It's also important for trying to create uh, urban residential options, which are currently uh, not as robust as they could be in the city. Uh, also, it's a, a significant project for <coughs> the blighting influence in that specific neighborhood. And uh, another point you mentioned is that uh, the building was also, uh, since 1987, was placed as a, uh, on the 
historic register of natural places, or natural places, historic places. Uh, so it is a significant uh, historical asset. And the last bullet, which probably is, is one of the most important too, is that it's, it's consistent with an overall strategic effort that this board and others have talked about in trying to uh, deal with the existing commercial space in the downtown core. Uh, the estimates of the <coughs> plan, which we referred to earlier, shows that there's approximately today about 2 million square feet of empty space. And one of the strategies that people are looking at over the next four to five years is how do we absorb that space and conversion to residential units uh, is one of the ways that there's some current demand that we should be able to do that. Uh, page four, just briefly, uh, as the chairman mentioned, this was built in the early, late 1800s. One of the earliest examples of the facility is a reinforced concrete construction model. One important thing to remember when we show you the next slide is that all the bearing walls, all the walls inside of the building are bearing because there's no steel structure, uh, which means that if you remove those walls or alter them, it has an impact on the structural integrity of the actual uh, structure. Again, the building was placed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1987. It was purchased. Can you just stop there? And, and what does it mean to be placed in the National Register of Historic Places? There are uh, a couple of things that are You can have a state designation, local designation, and there's a national designation. So this is a national designation, and the historic uh, preservation office looks at facilities around the country and only provides designation for those they feel they have national impact or national uh, historic value uh, for the community of the country. This one in particular uh, was given that status not only because of the Italian Renaissance, which you know here, uh, but also the construction uh, method, which this was one of the earliest attempts to create a masonry reinforced concrete gas in place structure, uh, which was really quite innovative in the early uh, 1800s, or late 1800s, uh, as an example. Uh, I think from the time I remember reading, so this was one of only two in the country that were constructed uh, this way in that era. The uh, facility was purchased by Alpha in 2002. It has been vacant for over 20 years. So it was vacant when it was purchased. It was not being used at all. Right. It had previously been used uh, by HUD uh, and had some hours of the year. It's going on a decade. During the time of the last 10 years, what attempts have been made any to do anything with the problems? Good question. How much money is penalty on hold? I would ask the members of the public to refrain from speaking out. Oh, that's right. They are, they are invited here as observers and listeners. Thank you very much for thus far complying with that. Uh, there was um, obviously the, the building had been the subject to uh, increased vandalism over the years as it was uh, laid vacant. What to do for uh, the roof collapse? Wanted to speak with the uh, developer, but there was some attempts made early on in 2003 uh, to begin to remove some of the debris and structures. And I think most people are aware of the famous there was a tree growing out of the roof uh, piece. Uh, the developer did attempt to start to do that. The roof actually collapsed when they were up on the roof uh, with some equipment uh, attempting to do that. Uh, I think when you see some of the slides that follow that show some of the structural damage, Ideas to make some of the reasons that that happened. Uh, since that time, the roof, uh, the home roof has been uh, built in. Uh, the developer continues to work uh, with the house and court folks to uh, secure the structure and uh, evidence as it is today. Their attempts to uh, go forward to uh, develop the building and put it back into use. Uh, no, no, it's my understanding that because of that or other things, at one time, the city of Buffalo did hold them in violation. Has that violation been uh, dealt with completely? The property has been written up multiple times by the Department of Permits and Inspections. Uh, the uh, violations uh, that have been written up by the department have been addressed and the uh, property under elegant development has complied uh, with uh, 
um, uh, the requirement to make repairs to the property when it has been written up. Uh, the city continues to um, pay due diligence to this property and other properties that are in this kind of state in the city, but uh, Ellicott Development has complied uh, with their requirements uh, when they have been written up. That's why you got to treat. And so my understanding is that all fines have been paid too. So that the fines. There are no fines that are owed at this point. There are no loans that are owed. There are no taxes. Okay. Yes. Is there another question? Um, but that fine has been, uh, and that's the only fine record. Uh, 